Good afternoon. My name is Nima Dorji, professional engineer. It is my honor and privilege to serve you and the Albertans as the uh, PEGA's 99th president. Thank you for trusting me with this great responsibility. A responsibility that wouldn't be possible without the commitment of the 98 PEGA presidents who came before me and who built this organization. Their work ensured that APEGA consistently delivered on our mandate to ensure safety and protection of the public. Their legacy is the continuing trust and the confidence that our buildings have placed in our professionals. To our immediate past president, Jane Tink, I want to thank her for her dedicated service and leadership to APEGA. Jane, your calm demeanor and your patience created a safe space for diverse views, to be heard and for thought, but thoughtful deliberations to occur on important issues. Thank you so much. Of course, the responsibility of guiding a PEGA is not mine alone. I have the privilege of sharing it with 15 other councillors and three public members, some of whom were just elected or re-elected last month. Congratulations and thank you for stepping up to serve your association. To the new executive members, President-elect George Heinen, Vice President Tim Joseph, I look forward to working closely with you in the coming year as we seek solutions to the challenges our association faces. And I know I'll rely heavily on Jane Agendran, our registrar and CEO, and his very able team of PEGA staff to help us ensure that we fulfill our mandate to the public. With close to 77,000 members, APEGA is the largest professional association in Alberta. We have been trusted with the privilege of self-regulation for the practices of engineering and geosciences. And with this comes great responsibility. APEGA's prime responsibility is to maintain the public's trust through the licensing of competent and ethical professional engineers and geoscientists. Our members are best served and the public interest is best protected when APEGA regulates the professions effectively, our well-deserved international reputation demands no less from us. Over the past two decades, particularly with, particularly with the advent of internet and globalization, our world has dramatically changed. In today's environment, it is conceivable for a project to have entirety of its engineering completed overseas and to have only the final work authenticated and assembled in Alberta. I believe one of the most important issues facing APEGA today is the challenge of regulating our professions in an era of outsourcing and offshoring. Technological advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning present additional challenges. We need to find solutions to ensure consistent oversight of professionals in technical work in engineering and geosciences for Alberta, regardless of where that work is done. APEGA members work on complex engineering and geoscience projects around the world. They provide technical solutions to some of the most challenging problems society faces. We have a duty to participate in the public debate on issues that involve our professions and to inform the public and elected officials of the options so that they can make the right decisions to serve the broader public interest. For many technical problems our world currently faces, regardless of the cause, our members have the experience and knowledge to offer solutions. We should create spaces and forums in which our members, with their professional and technical expertise, can be heard and engage in discussions with the public to better serve our communities and our province. We must be mindful of the enormous trust society has placed on us. We must not be shy in showcasing our contributions and demonstrating engineering and geoscience as noble professions in pursuit. Over the coming months, I hope to engage our members and stakeholders on these topics so that we find the right balance in adapting to these changes in the globalized economy and APEGA's duty to protect the public in Alberta. Of course, technical problems should not be our only focus Due to the economic downturn of recent years, thousands of members have lost their jobs. While we are beginning to see a glimmer of hope in employment numbers, unfortunately for many, 
they will be entering a very different world of serial, project-based employment, or entirely different industry. The human toll from this downturn is very real and has been devastating for many. We are a professional community, and when some members of our community face hardship, it is incumbent on the rest of that community to offer support. I urge our working members to offer support and guidance to those who have lost their jobs, such as joining a Pegas mentoring program or making time to meet with them in person. In addition to looking to our current membership, we need to look at the upcoming generation. Our professions provide young people with some of the most diverse career opportunities available today. The engineering and geoscience professions offer the opportunity to make real differences in people's lives and in their communities through addressing energy needs, designing safe, reliable infrastructure, developing innovations in medical technology and environmental protection. Our professions prepare students to become lifelong solution seekers while providing financial compensation that enables young professionals to put roots in their communities and raise families. APEGA's successful K-12 and the university outreach programs ensure that the next generation is aware of the opportunities that our professions provide. No one is an island. We all got where we are today with the help of others who deserve our thanks. <clears throat> I want to thank those who have guided me and provided me the opportunities and life experiences that have equipped me to serve you. I'm fortunate to have had many mentors who have helped me during my career. Some of my early mentors were Peggy Simons, PNG, former associate dean, Dr. Ma Dr. Chan Verasenghi, former dean, and late Dr. Michael Ward, uh, all of Schulich School of Engineering. I am extremely grateful to them. As someone born in a Tibetan refugee camp in India, I am grateful to His Holiness Dalai Lama for all that he has done so that I can be here today and be ready to serve you. I want to thank my mother, <laughs> who was widowed when I was three, <laughs> and my, mother was all, my brother was only a year and a half, she raised us as a single mother in the refugee camp. While she never had the opportunity to a formal education herself, she ensured that my brother and I became contributing members of society as professional engineers. I want to thank my wife, Dr. Serene Dorji, perhaps the most hardworking, the hardest working person that I know, <clears throat> who has allowed me to pursue my interest in public service. I thank our daughters, Tenchu and Tenzin, and I bet you they're probably online watching this, <laughs> who are our hope and legacy that we leave behind in creating a better world. And finally, I want to thank all of you for giving me this opportunity. Over the next 12 months, I look forward to your support, look forward to engaging you in the association in discussion so that these and other matters of concern that concern you and association can be discussed. Thank you so much.